Hi there, Doug Stewin with IT Creations. We decided to post the benchmarks for the P620 separately because our P620 video was getting way too long. And I know attention can sometimes waver when I drone on and on and on. Let's get to it. For testing, we're running the standard Cinebench 2.0 and 3D Mark applications. To make it just a little more entertaining, we decided to test our Lenovo ThinkStation P620 AMD Threadripper workstation against another Lenovo, the ThinkStation P520. We'll be doing a belated review of the P520 right after the P620. Even though the P520 is slightly older than the P620 AMD Threadripper workstation, it is part of Lenovo's latest generation. Aside from using the exact same case as the P520, everything else is different as the P520 is running a single Intel Xeon W2225 CPU with four cores and eight threads. I fully expect our P620 Threadripper to blow the proverbial doors off the P520, but I thought, hey, they're both single socket CPU systems, and the P520 has the Intel Xeon W, which is exactly what this Threadripper WX was designed to compete against. Do you think the WX on that AMD processor was like, Intel W processors, we're going to X you out. It's actually for extended frequency range, the extra megahertz for boost, and I'm guessing W is for workstation. That said, four cores compared to 64 cores? Spoiler, there's no comparison. I mean, if anything, we should have taken an 18 core W processor at the very least, which would have lost also, but that's beside the point. Do you need GPUs? Oh, IT Creations has GPUs. In fact, we even got that new GeForce RTX 3090 from PNY, but those definitely won't last long, at least in the short term. We've got Teslas, GeForce, Quadros, and Titans. That's right, if you need GPUs for computational acceleration or for extreme gaming and everything in between, IT Creations has what you need and at a great price. Click this link to see our selection and let the games begin. One thing, the P620 came with the NVIDIA Quadro RTX 6000, while the P520 is using NVIDIA's Quadro RTX 8000 card, both of which are better used for high-performance computing, analytics, and more data-oriented applications. So not really for gaming, but still, can they game? You bet your ass they can. Surprise, surprise, we also got an NVIDIA GeForce 3090 GPU just before I sent the P620 back to Lenovo. I actually had to unpack the box to pop that GPU in for testing, but we'll get to that in a minute. Using Cinebench 2.0 to test CPU performance, as expected, the AMD Threadripper 3995WX tore up the competition with a score of 22,843 points compared to the W2225 with a score of 1,904 points. The next CPU down, at least on our list, is the Intel Xeon 8168, which also did not even come close with a score of 16,536 points. This really wasn't fair to begin with because we didn't use the same components in each system and not even the same core counts. <laughs> Such is life. This really wasn't a contest. 64 cores compared to four cores? For CPU performance in this particular matchup, the Threadripper Pro won by a factor of 12. Another consideration is PCI 4.0 but neither of these GPU cards are compatible with PCI 4.0, so not a factor. Although I see AMD has released a new AMD Radeon RX 6800, which it has been reported as 50% faster than the RTX 3090, but we don't have any of those. Here are the statistics from two other builds we did just recently, and you can see those videos in our feed for a custom build featuring the AMD Ryzen Threadripper 3990X with an NVIDIA RTX 2080 Ti GPU and another custom build using an AMD Ryzen 9 3950X. Clearly, the 3990X has a slight advantage even over the 3995WX, both with 64 cores. But again, there are definite differences between these CPUs, but both are really for development. And gaming performance, although very enticing, is not the main focus. The Ryzen 9 3950X also delivered some impressive numbers for CPU performance with a score of 8,990. This was not supposed to be an in-depth CPU comparison, but there you have it. What is interesting is the GPU performance, which we tracked using the 3D Mark application, specifically the Time Spy test. Outfitted with the RTX 8000, the P520 didn't win that one either. The P520 posted a score of 10,860, with the P620 running the RTX 6000, dropping a score of 11,249. But again, 3D Mark is a measure of GPU performance and not really influenced by CPU performance. We did switch out the RTX 8000 and popped it into the P620 just for a direct comparison of GPU performance across platforms, which produced a score of 11,623, or roughly 400 points better than the numbers on the RTX 6000, and almost 800 points difference compared to the P520 with the same card. 
Just as I was about to package up the P620 AMD Threadripper workstation, we received a brand spanking new PNY GeForce RTX 3090 GPU. This is what NVIDIA is calling their BF GPU. If you're wondering if the name has any relationship to the SpaceX BFR or Big F***ing Rocket, then no, this is not the case. BF is for Big Ferocious. At least that's what they're telling us. I'm not sure I believe that, but this thing is huge. Three fans on a big f***ing card that straddles the entire width of the available space, and not just a dual slot card, but a tri-slot, which might piss off a few people by covering up usable PCI slots. Of course, we tested that in a P620 Threadripper. Along with the 75 watts of power from the Bi-16 socket, it also has two 8-pin power connectors at 150 watts each for a total of 375 watts of power. It actually only requires 350 watts. You might be surprised by the 3D Mark results, which had the NVIDIA Quadro RTX 8000 first, then the Quadro RTX 6000, and lastly the PNY GeForce RTX 3090. Honestly, I was thinking the RTX 3090 might edge out those Quadros, but the fact of the matter is, the Quadro cards are more for professional applications and about three times as expensive as the GeForce RTX 3090. GeForce is also really designed for gaming, and this particular card for bragging rights too. Just in case you are wondering if you can add this card to your GPU servers in the data center or cloud, forget about it. You might get a cease and desist letter from NVIDIA. I'm not really sure any large analysis needs to happen here. 64 core AMD Threadripper 3995WX beats the crap out of not only the 4 core Intel W processor, but also its big brother sibling, the Xeon Scalable 8168 Platinum CPU. We also learned those really expensive Quadro RTX cards are great for gaming, but cost way too much to consider using like three times as much, even when compared to the new gaming GeForce RTX 3090. Did this review solve any pressing questions you may have had? Probably not. But what you should remember is IT Creations carries those Lenovo workstations and those GPUs, plus all the other stuff like memory, storage, and network cards. If you have any questions, post them in the comments section below. I'm Doug Stimley with IT Creations, and thanks for watching.